And if, I mean, if he had survived that, uh, 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 now we have to know whether it was just propaganda lies and deception or, or uh, that the British government did. Yes. But that's what they did to him. Mm. And uh, because, look, Michael Collins and De Valera and Harry Boland and all those people, Tom Barry and all that, they all lived with us in Vaughan's Hotel, 29 Parnell Square in Granby Road. My goodness. And I gave those Vaughan's Hotel papers to the University of Limerick. Yes. And Tom went on and hid them because all this is in it. And I say that yeah. our people are entitled to know that knowledge and information. Of course they are. You know, how can you make a valid decision if you yes. don't have the, uh, the facts and the truth? That's all we want. And accountability. We're only asking, we're not asking for any violence or vengeance to the Crown of England or the Pope in Rome. We're asking for accountability. That's what we're asking for. Yes. And it must be done between now, tomorrow, and uh, Easter Monday. Mm. If it isn't, the IRB will take that as a uh, 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 to uh, the courts in yes. Europe mm -hmm. um, as a Holocaust yes. on our people. Well, I tell you something. In 1155. I I have actually been corrected many times even about using the word famine. It's, it's not, not famine. It's genocide. It's genocide. Yes. And there was no. It was deliberately done. And and as you know, um, <coughs> uh, Philip Lynch. He studied it a lot. A lot of people have studied it. And I said in, in 1155, we had between 6 and 8 million people. Yes. And uh, they brought it down between from Henry II right up to Henry VIII, Cromwell and Ireton, his son-in-law. They went around to those what I call cabins or chevines, yes. and they just annihilated the people yes. and sold off the young people as slaves. They brought them down, I'm told, to around 550,000 Irish people. And then they had to bring in the plantation of Ulster yeah, and that's right. yes. to control the, the whole country for themselves, for Britain, for the Crown. That's what they did. And I'm asking them to account for that. <laughs> because we cannot move on. We, we were part of Britain. You know, Britain, England, of course, yes. Wales, Scotland and Ireland were all the same. Until Britain decided, we have to expand our empire. We have to have all the food. We cannot. We have an army, a crown force, and a royal navy. We don't have the food to feed them. Mm. And as you know, they have to be fed 365 days a year. And where are we going to get the food? <coughs> and Ireland was the place. And that's what that's what it was all about. Get, getting that food. Even their slaves, they they fed them with the food. But you, they put the people out here. Yes. Knock their little hovels, let them die of starvation and the wind and the rain and the thing down on top of them. Yes. That's how they treat it. And we were part of Britain. But that's that, what? Part there of, the, of, of that. Crimes that, against humanity. That's and that's what, what the court in The Hague needs to have that's that case. That's what it needs to have. If they don't do it, I can't. I look, I'm gone too old. And the 100 years is up on the 6th of December uh, um, last year, last December. Yes. Uh, December. Uh, 21 and we saw it and the lies and the deception and fraud mm. we saw last Sunday the 16th when Britain handed over to the provisional free state government and Michael Collins you've read it out here before yes in his, his own book uh, uh, of it and they're trying to pretend it's a sovereign government they're lying to Europe they're lying to America who only for America because the Fenian Brotherhood <coughs> We were founded on St. Patrick's Day, as you know. Yes. And uh, by James Stevens and John O'Mahony in America, the sister organization. They're the Fenian Brotherhood. And only for America, we wouldn't have got our independence. There was the power. But we're asking, look, we have 70 million people worldwide. Aren't they entitled to know the They people? are, absolutely. Yes. And aren't they all part of it? But us? I mean, if you, if you looked at the, the, um, the celebrations or commemorations, I should say, uh, last Sunday on it was, RTE. Uh, disgrace. It was an absolute sham. It was yeah. a disgrace. It was an absolute disgrace. Pretending that they're a, a not, not only that, but it was these. And the seals and was, the, of no, the IRB. But it was just on, on, you know, what I found was insulting. It was. Was that these reporters dressed in, in um, whatever dress that they, they had um, 
It was like mocking. They were smiling, they were, giving a report. It was all a sham. A sham. And it was and a all disgrace. For money. It's all about of money. Of course and it is. That's all they care you about know. is money. It couldn't get less about the country or the people. Not at the, all. Not at all. No, that, that that's it. Matter. And don't interfere with me and don't say anything. No. I'm not allowed to. Why didn't they go on last Sunday mm-hmm. to the IRB? Yes. And ask the IRB what happened. Now, just to conclude, very important you to bring all of that up. I will, but the most important thing, what is happening tomorrow in the Mansion House, the 21st? We're not allowed into the Mansion House, the IRB, who found the budget it's a, but That's disgraceful. That actually is discrimination. And you'll see, always they, they allow in and they celebrate the uh, Jewish Holocaust. And probably Sunday or Sunday week, I don't know what day it is. <clears throat> Yes. And uh, everybody's allowed in to celebrate that or commemorate it, as you say, it's a better idea. Right. right. And we're not the IRB who founded it, funded the state. But has any reason been given you know, for that? Do, do, that's the headquarters of Dublin City Council. And Dublin City Council won't recognise the sovereign dollar in government. And yet they will use our tricolor flag. Of they course will they will. Illegally. 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 And fraudulently yes. using it. And look, all we're asking for is accountability, John. That's all we're asking for. It's, well, I'll put it like this to you. Uh, thanks to you, Billy, to Chris Fogarty, John Robinson, yes. all the great people. The conversation has started. I'm getting numerous calls and oh, texts uh, from people all over the country. And it's um, so important. And they're all supporting you, Billy, oh, in keeping you. this momentum going. And look, Chris Fogarty, I mean, you wrote a wonderful book on all the food. Yes. It was, look, all, all this Britain wanted, the Crown of England mm-hmm. only wanted the food here. Yes. They didn't want the people. They didn't want the people eating the food. Yes. They wanted to feed their Crown forces and the Royal Navy. Yes. And that's what they did. And that's the essence and of it. Might is right was with them. And that's what they did. So tomorrow's Britain. commemoration, the 21st of January 2022, is commemorating what happened in 1919. That's it. That's it. I've got it. Now, to conclude, I'm just going to read on request from Billy Maguire, who has become a great friend of mine, a great spokesperson on history. The real history, folks. The real history. That certain individuals, certain governments, certain parties, over the decades have airbrushed out of uh, Irish people's knowledge but now i'm glad to say thanks to billy thanks to his great work over the decades that people now are asking the right questions and wondering what the hell has gone on in this country for decades since the foundation of the state that we have been hoodwinked and this is where we leave it i'm now going to read public naheran the provisional government of the Irish Republic to the people of Ireland. Now, this was actually read by that great man, Porrick Pierce, and others on the footsteps of the GPO on that fateful day, 1916. And we have to commemorate and thank and respect with humility as Irish men and women and children, the men and women who went out there who fought for an ideal to end the tyrannical slavery of Great Britain for hundreds of years on this country. When when men, women and children, folks, were walking by the ditches of Ireland with a cloth over them in the winter months of October, November, December, January, February, eating weeds. Folks, you have got to remember this. Eating the grass, eating the weeds, just to stay alive. And all the time, the genocidal activity of these British government people were harvesting the food and the fish and the meats being exported out of the country to support their army, their empire army, and starving the Irish people. Starving food-wise, religious-wise, and rights, human rights wise. And it culminated in the Public Naheran, the provisional government 
of the Irish Republic to the people of Ireland. I'm sorry if I get emotional, but I've become very angry and very vexed when I hear all of this. So I'm sure people will understand that I am, like Billy, very, very genuine. Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generations from which she receives her old tradition of nationhood, Ireland, through us, summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organised and trained her manhood through her secret revolutionary organisation, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and through her own military organisations, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army, having patiently perfected her discipline, having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal itself. She now seizes that moment and supported by her exiled children in America and by the gallant allies in Europe, but relying on her own strength, she strikes in full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies to be sovereign and indefeasible. The long usurpation of that right by a foreign people and government has not extinguished the right, nor can it ever be extinguished, except by the destruction of the Irish people. In every generation, the Irish people have asserted their right to national freedom and sovereignty. Six times during the past 300 years, they have asserted it in arms. And standing on that fundamental right and again asserting it in arms in the face of the world, we hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign, independent state. And we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom, of its welfare and of its exaltation among the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled and hereby claims the allegiance of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and of all its parts cherishing all the children of the nation equally and oblivious to of the differences carefully fostered the children of the nation equally and by an alien government which have divided a minority from the majority in the past. Until our arms have brought the opportune moment for the establishment of a permanent national government representative of the whole people of Ireland and elected by the suffrages of all our men and women, the provisional government hereby constituted will administer the civil and military affairs of the Republic in trust for its people. We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God whose blessing we invoke upon our arms. And we pray that no one that serves that cause will dishonour it by cowardice or inhumanity. In this supreme hour, the Irish nation must, by its valour and discipline, and by the readiness of its children to sacrifice themselves for the common good, prove itself worthy of the august destiny to which it is called. Signed on behalf of the Provisional Government, Thomas J. Clark, Sean McDermott, P. H. Pierce, James Connolly, Tomás McDonough, Eamon Kent, 
Joseph Plunkett. Amen. Well, John, congratulations. You really, uh, you read that with such feeling. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know, it is lovely to hear it. And it's a credit to you. And thank, thank you, you so much for that. Well, I feel, I feel very angry and sad. I don't blame you. And I do too. And I get very emotional too, John. But one thing I'll say, you read that document, you have to have sovereignty. If you don't have sovereignty, you're a slave. Or yes. can be enslaved. And we are in a peculiar situation now. We have these corporations. We have the GA taken off the sovereign seal and air off the, off the metal. You, you know, that's our sovereignty. Yes. And what are they up to? Are they going to enslave all those young people again? Because if they can easily do it, if you don't stand up, sovereignty comes from God. Corporations and everything else are man-made. Yes. It's so important to know where you are and what you are. And what you support because you could be giving away your sovereignty and you become a slave and that's it well thank you indeed billy a great pleasure talking to you on this momentous occasion for the 21st well uh, i'd like to wish January. all those today on the 21st of January, a very happy independence day yeah, exactly that's it so from all of us here in the beautiful townland of kappa in county limerick uh, remember your history Start asking questions, more questions than what you're asking. Start the conversation. The historical societies around the country are so important in all of this because they are the people who have the knowledge, the know-how, and it's your right as an Irish citizen that we get the rights for our future generations correctly administered. From all of us here, Gornamila Machat, Augustal Gafoyle.